I recently performed a battery health test on my Tesla Model 3 and it got a very strange result that many of you were asking me to follow up on. I got an interesting response from Tesla that I want to share with you along with my latest upgrade to my car that has greatly increased my range. So after I performed that battery health test, I submitted a service request to Tesla in the app and I told them, hey, I performed a battery health test that resulted in 7%, which sounds concerning. What does this mean exactly? Well, I didn't hear back for a while, but about a week later, I received an automated email from Tesla that had some insightful data on range and efficiency that I wanna share with you because this info will help anyone better understand the factors that go into improving efficiency and achieving good range in a Tesla because that is one of the most important skill sets to have as an owner. Now, Tesla's email was also fortuitous because right around that same time, I complained about my Model Y getting 100 miles less than the EPA estimated range during a recent road trip. And that's what we need to talk about first, EPA range. We all see these range estimates on electric vehicles and Teslas, and it's one of the first specs that we compare. But how exactly is an EPA range determined? Well, many people claim that Tesla games the EPA rating system because their listed range is usually on the more optimistic end. You can see an example here where the Tesla Model Y is shown as being more efficient than a much smaller Chevy Bolt. Now, here's why that is. First, we cannot deny that Tesla simply has extremely efficient drivetrains. They've refined their motors and aerodynamics for years, and it shows. But there's also not a single standard by the EPA, so the calculation methods can be different depending on the manufacturer. Tesla takes advantage of this by running five different tests while most other EV makers run just two tests, and those two tests include one city drive and one highway drive. And Tesla chooses to instead dedicate a little more time and effort by running three more tests, which includes things like an air conditioning test loop and a cold test cycle. And all of these three additional tests are at lower speeds, which is where the magic happens because Tesla's efficiency shines at low speeds, thus bringing their final calculated EPA estimated range a little higher than if they had only performed those two standard driving tests. Now, Tesla is not cheating in any way. They are simply playing the game differently than their competitors, and the EPA seems to allow it, for now at least. Now that you know how the EPA rating works, let's get into Tesla's insider info about efficiency and range. Now, this came to me in an email called Tesla Range Report, which they got from remotely analyzing a portion of my driving, and I'm assuming anybody can do this by simply submitting a battery service request from the app. Now, the email begins with some fairly common knowledge, stating that actual range heavily depends on speed, acceleration, vehicle load, winds, terrain, temperatures, and other parameters. Now, the rest of the email breaks down which ones are the most impactful and what we can do about it. But before we get into vehicle efficiency, let's talk about food efficiency. That is the specialty of today's sponsor, Factor, which is my favorite meal subscription service that takes the stress out of healthy eating by providing fresh, never frozen meals that are ready in just two minutes. Now, my wife and I have a toddler, and on top of that, we are in the process of moving to a new house, so it's nearly impossible to find the time to grocery shop and cook, but with Factor, we don't have to worry about any of that, yet we still get tasty and nutritional meals. And with our new housing expenses, we are trying to cut back on eating out, so not only is Factor cheaper than takeout, but the meals are ready faster than any nearby restaurant delivery service. And my personal favorite meal so far has been the Queso Fundido, because I'm a sucker for anything with tender beef and melty cheesy goodness, which pair perfectly with the cauliflower rice instead of unhealthy tortilla chips. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code andysly 50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com and code andysly 50 for 50% off your first box. Now going back to the Tesla range report, the included table shows how much energy I consume during this driving period compared to what would have been consumed during an EPA testing cycle of the same distance. And it's broken down into three categories, motor, climate, and accessories. You can see during this portion of my driving, my motors use considerably more than the EPA estimate while my climate and accessories use quite a bit less. But even with my more efficient climate and accessories, the motor had a much bigger impact, thus resulting in a total reduction of 37 miles of estimated range during this driving period. As far as the climate and accessories go, the key things to remember are that heating and cooling can use quite a bit of energy along with any accessories that you may have plugged into the chargers or sockets inside the vehicle. 
the auto climate setting is engineered to most efficiently heat and cool the cabin, so try to use that most of the time. Now for energy use while the car is parked, you can see the biggest culprits are preconditioning and sentry. Now preconditioning uses energy to heat or cool the cabin and battery pack, while sentry mode typically uses around 4 kilowatt hours per day when active. Now to reduce sentry consumption, be sure to check the boxes to exclude home, work, or favorites to turn sentry off when it is not required. But the biggest range impact will be from driving conditions. For example, the following scenarios all negatively affect range. Driving uphill, driving over 70 miles an hour for a long period of time, which explains my Model Y's low range on my recent trip. Cold weather, precipitation, harsh acceleration, heavy loads in the vehicle, and driving into strong winds. Now, those obviously will result in a lower estimated range than the EPA estimated range, but one other big factor that many people forget is tires. Not only are smaller tires more efficient along with optimal tire pressure, but tire design itself can have a huge impact. And that's why when Salen asked if I wanted to try out their brand new E-Range EV tires, I jumped at the chance. These use proprietary EcoPoint 3 technology and are the first dedicated electric vehicle tire lineup specifically designed to increase range. EcoPoint 3 technology uses an advanced manufacturing process of liquid phase mixing, which reduces the rolling resistance. Now, these tires also have an increased load bearing capacity to account for the extra weight of vehicle batteries. They also feature advanced tread patterns and specially formulated rubber compounds to handle the instant torque of an electric vehicle, along with silent tread technology for a quiet and comfortable ride. Now I've driven over 500 miles on these tires and I've driven it pretty aggressively. I have, I have not taken it easy. I wanted to really see what these tires could do in 80 miles an hour on the, the freeway for most of these drives. Uh, and I'm super impressed so far. Yes, this time of year is pretty optimal for efficiency, but they are averaging under 230 watt hours per mile, which is a record for me. My lifetime average before getting these tires was around 254 watt hours per mile. So these tires seem to be the real deal. And they're honestly on the more affordable side at around $187 per tire based on my Model 3's tire size. And they are so much smoother than my previous tires, especially at high speeds. So I'm definitely going to be using these from now on. And I highly encourage you to check these out. The only question is, how will they handle winters? I guess time will only tell. So my current plan going forward based on the info from Tesla for maximizing efficiency in my Model 3 consists of these two things. Avoid driving above 70 miles an hour for long stretches and using these E-Range EV tires. That seems to be the winning formula for me right now. Let me know in the comments below what you are doing to increase your efficiency in your Tesla or your electric vehicle. I'm all about efficiency. That's my favorite thing to do. It's like a game I play when I'm driving. I'm like, how efficient can I make this drive? You know, the more efficient you are, the more range you get, and the less money that you're spending on charging. So it brings your overall cost down, especially if you're driving a lot like I do. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Tesla and tech videos in the future. My name is Andy. I'll talk to you in the next one.